Welcome to Old Brothers RC. Today I'm gonna teach you how to punch people in the face. <laughs> Just kidding. Actually, I'm gonna show you how to build one of these 124 scale capras. Super freaking cool. Stay tuned and check it out. I've just picked up this little 124th scale rock buggy and it seems to be a pretty cool little design. It looks a lot like a Capra and hopefully it's gonna turn out pretty sweet. Since it's raining and nasty outside, I wanna build this 124th scale rock buggy to use on the new course that I'm working on. The course is gonna be real big and real awesome and I'll be starting that build pretty soon as well. I've got a ton of different parts for this Capra including these oil shocks, I've got some nice wheels here. Sweet set of micro comp pin tires. These are the smaller version. Emacs servo. I also just picked up this set of portal axles and I'm super excited to see how these work. I'll be using one of these longer can motors. Not sure which one yet, but they're both longer can and they're both 50 turn. Got a metal gear transmission for it as well. So I've also got this old SCX 24 chassis with a few parts still left on it as well as a bunch of different four links and drive shafts. Hopefully I have everything here that I need, but I've got a giant parts bucket. So if not, I'll just be digging in there. All right, I'm gonna clear this off and get started by building the Enjora Rock Buggy chassis first. Okay, let's pop this thing open and see what's inside. Looks like we got body panels, nice little LED light bar, battery strap and some double-sided tape, bunch of screws and the cage and the bits that hold it together. One thing that kind of sucks and would be pretty easy for Enjora to do is include instructions, but there aren't any. So I guess we're just gonna have to wing it. Hopefully this thing doesn't become a nightmare. This was supposed to come in red and it's a really more like a purplish fuchsia color. That sucks. Definitely gonna have to paint it. So it looks like this X brace is the roof. We're gonna pop it in just like so. Next, we got this piece here, and it just pops in right here, and I believe the hood panel connects to it somehow. The good thing is there's only two different size screws, and the longer ones are used to put the tube chassis together. These shorter ones here are going to be used to put the panels on. Looks like this next piece is the push bumper. And it goes right on like so. Next we have this little piece, looks like some half seats, eh, dashboard. Just goes on with a couple screws here. Next we got this piece here. Looks to be the battery holder and it sort of slides under the seats here. And uh, goes together in the back like so. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Still some instructions would have been nice, but it went together pretty easy. Everything fit together nice and it looks pretty cool. I wanna put the body panels on, but I'm gonna have to paint them first. That's gonna take a minute. So first I'm gonna go ahead and remove this transmission and skid plate here and see how they fit on that rock buggy chassis. I've seen some pictures of these things in the reviews on Amazon and the wheels were sticking out way past the front and the back. I wanna bring my wheels in pretty close. I don't want them sticking out too far, especially in the front, just enough to clear the bumper and make it to where I got a good approach angle. So it looks like the stock SCX skid plate just fits right in there, matches up with the holes on the new chassis and seems to be ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and pop it back out now that I know it fits. And I'm gonna put the metal transmission on here with the bigger motor. That'll get me quite a bit of weight down low. Got this nice little metal transmission here. Picked it up on Amazon a while back. It's got full bearings and it's much heavier than the stock transmission. So it'll add some weight down low and some extra durability as well. Now what I wanna do is pop it apart and get the bigger motor installed onto it. 
I'm gonna use this Hobby Fans 50 turn motor. Now this one comes with a nice little brass pinion as well as the aluminum mount that you'll need to put it on your transmission. So just take that new motor mount plate and pop it right on. Okay, we got our new motor mount plate on there. So put the motor mounting screws back in here, but I don't tighten them down all the way because I need to adjust the pinion gear to the spur gear. So then I put my spur gear on and I test the fitment. I can take that spur gear off and tighten this down. Put the spur gear back on, check to make sure we're meshing well again. Looks to be perfect. And come back on with my spur gear nut and boom, we're in business. Before I install this transmission back to the skid plate, I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of heavy grease on these inner gears. Same thing with my spur and my pinion. This is gonna just keep them running a little bit quieter. These metal gears tend to make quite a bit of noise. As you can hear there, they've quieted down quite a bit. Pop the cover back on. All right, now we can mate this transmission to the skid plate. Now that we've managed that, we can put this skid plate slash transmission brace into the new chassis. There it is. On to the next step. So after tinkering around a little bit with some different size links, I decided to go with these links. And this is a Coda Racing link set. Got it on Amazon, like pretty much everything else I get. And it was made for the C10 or the JL chassis. And I think these are gonna be the best option. If it ends up to where I think that the front wheels are sticking out too far, I might come back with the deadbolt front links because they're a little shorter. But first, let's throw this one on and see what it looks like. All right, now that we got that four link on, actually three link in the front, let's go ahead and test out this new portal axle kit I got. This one was only about $45.99 plus tax, so about half the price all the other ones I've seen. It seems to be pretty good, but you never know until you get it installed and give it a test drive. This set comes with the steering linkage and servo mount as well. Better make sure this Emacs servo fits in there. Oh yeah, very nice. I'm gonna go ahead and install my drive shafts now. I can hook up my bottom link. Then I'll install the bottom half of my drive shaft. Now that I've got my drive line together, I can install my lower links. Okay, we got the front end partially together here. It looks like it articulates well. It's not hitting the tube chassis or anything, so we'll keep on moving forward. Next, I'm going to put together this steering linkage here and get that installed. Now that we got the front four link as well as the steering linkage installed, I want to go ahead and test out the electronics. I've decided to use this controller and this ESC that I pulled out of an RGT. I've got a couple RGTs and CR. 24s laying around. They're pretty much garbage, so I've been scalping parts off them for a while. The battery for the RGT fits up in here really nice, as well as the ESC fits right back here where you're supposed to put the battery. However, this nice thick battery weighs a bit, and now it's up here in the front where I can get the weight advantage from it. And I like that. I also love RGT controllers. They got steering and throttle dual rate. So this is actually a great little controller. Really easy to use with one hand. Love this little controller. It doesn't take up much room in my bag when I take my trucks out to the course. Everybody should take note of that. 
We don't need giant controllers. We need smaller controllers. They're much more convenient and easy to pack around. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this Emacs servo. And then I wanna test out the electronics to make sure everything's functioning before I go any further with this build. I don't like my servo horns to stand out. So I just take a Sharpie to it and boom, you got yourself a black servo horn. Stealth mode. Okay, you got the servo in there. Let's give it a test. Looks like everything works, pretty sweet. Oh, look at the guts are hanging on, master. Look at him struggle. Oh, he's struggling. His guts are hanging out. It's so funny. Look at him try to slide across the floor. Okay, I'm pretty stoked on that. Next, I wanna get this rear portal axle in. Okay, I've got the rear portal installed. I'm gonna install some shocks now. <clears throat> These Enjora shocks come with soft, medium, and hard springs. The soft springs came on the shocks and I'm gonna leave those on there. This thing's not gonna weigh very much, so I don't want stiff springs limiting my travel. More rubber O-rings, which I do not like. I really don't like these rubber O-rings. They rot out. But I really do like these oil shocks. They're pretty sweet, so I'll suffer the rubber O-rings. I wish they would manufacture them in a different way, so we don't have to use these rubber O-rings, but I've got a lot of extra ones laying around. We just have to repair them as we go. Okay, I got all the ball joints installed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stick them on the Capra. They come with these nice little spacers so the shocks don't bind up. Oh man, that looks good. Now I'm always trying to get as much articulation as possible. So the farther back that you mount your shock on the upper mount, the more articulation you're gonna get. This chassis comes with three holes and I'm mounting back as far as I can. All right, it's really starting to take shape. Looks like we got quite a bit of articulation here. Okay, it's time for one of my very favorite parts and that's the wheel and tire install. These Enjora wheels and tires are freaking awesome and they are not very expensive, which is fantastic. When you're building something like this, it can get real expensive real fast. If you're one of those guys who likes to put, you know, a thousand dollars into a little tiny rig like this, then you're probably not watching the right channel. I never do that. I look for the inexpensive stuff that works real well. So what we have here are the micro pin comp tires from Enjora. These are super killer. I haven't really put them on any of my other trucks because I like scale looking trucks. I like there to be a regular looking tire on most of my vehicles. Uh, this thing is basically a little comp rig. So these are gonna look great on it and they're gonna function really well. I've got a sweet little green wheel here. These are sweet wheels, I like them a lot. However, these are the wheels that take a million little screws, so I try not to use these very often either. I just don't like the labor that has to go into them. I think they're pretty cool looking, but there's a lot of labor in these little screws. So I wanted to add some more weight to this capper down low, and usually I just throw on some of these brass hexes, but in this case, it's gonna rub on the portal axle. So to keep from spending any more money on this thing, I just get some copper wire and wrap it around the inner ring of the bead lock. This gives me quite a bit of extra added weight and it doesn't really cost me anything because I got a lot of Romex laying around and I just strip this copper out of it and throw it in here. Now that that's done, I can just pop it in my tire. Squeeze it around a little bit to get my foam straightened out. All right, there's one with all the screws in it. And one good thing about this process is you really only have to do it once. Because now you can insert it in there. And when you want to take your wheel apart again, Really all you have to do 
is take the six screws out of the back and you can leave this part assembled if you want to change the tires. Sweet, so we got one put together. Now I only got three more to do. These wheels and tires are looking pretty good. But now I'm gonna go ahead and paint these panels. And while they're drying, I'll finish up the other two. I got all the body panels painted and they're drying, so let's finish up these wheels and tires. The next thing I wanna do is clean up this wire mess and get everything routed through the cage. First, I'm gonna use a little double-sided tape to install the battery. As I mentioned before, I want the battery here in the front. It's gonna add some weight to the front and it fits in here really nice. Okay, that took some doing, but everything's tucked out of the way now. I've got this wire here for the light bar. And since I can't remove the battery, I've got the charger port here and it just kind of tucks in here. The side panels will cover this stuff. So really all you'll see is this stuff in the back here, which is fine. I can always put a tire up here if I want, or maybe even make a custom panel here, but we'll see. Okay, the panels are dry and ready to be installed. Oh man, this thing's starting to look super trick. One last thing I need to do is wire the light bar. I want to shorten this wire here. It's just way too long. All right, now that I've shortened these, this is how I hardwire stuff without soldering. Get yourself some shrink tube and you pop it on each side. Then you just twist your positive and negative together. Now that I've got my two positives and my two negatives twisted together, I just fold them down. Then I slide my shrink tube over that. Now that I've got my shrink tube slid over the wires, just hit it with a lighter. Bam, shrinks down, locks those wires together, and you're good to go. Man, that was quite a bit of work, but this thing is super cool. I'm super stoked on it. It's got some killer flex and it looks pretty freaking cool. So let's take it out to the outdoor course and give it a run, see how it functions. So I'm out here at the lower half of my course. My whole course is just absolutely destroyed. We've been having record rain for a couple weeks now and it's just trashing everything. So a lot of my obstacles are jacked. All of my bridges are out pretty much. We're in between torrential downpours right now, so I'm trying to get some footage of this thing before it starts pouring down rain again. Ooh. I can already tell that this ESC does not have enough slow crawl capability. I thought with the aftermarket motor it would work better than it did in the RGT, but it's still not great. The bridge to nowhere because the other half is missing but even though the ESC is not great we can still get a pretty good idea of how cool this thing is I'm gonna have to get another ESC in here but I'll have to do that another day upgrades upgrades oh look at that There you go. Didn't have to use too much wheel speed. Man, that's cool. I love the way this thing looks.
The one good thing about the rain is there's no shortage of cool places to drive the RCs right now in my yard. There's little creeks all over the place. Oh, look at that. Little, little beast. Wheel speed. So I'm liking how everything's functioning except for the ESC. Uh, just needs a little better slow crawl capability. Give me a little more control on the harder sections. Once I get that, this thing will be fantastic. It climbs like a little beast. I actually love what the rain has done to my course. There's just so much new stuff to drive on. I'm actually super stoked on it. Glad it destroyed everything. <laughs> Man, this little capper is so freaking sweet. I am so stoked on this little guy. Let's see if we can get up this super steep little section here. Man, it is not tipping backwards, and that is super steep. It's got a great weight bias. No. Oh, there it goes. Just when you think it's not going to make it. Man, this thing is crazy capable, and everything's wet. So once it's dry, this thing is just going to go anywhere. thing's got great wheel speed just needs a little better slow crawl and this thing will be a monster Got my teeter-totter here, one of the only obstacles that survived the storm. Okay, I think I've seen enough to know that this thing is well worth the time and money that I spent on it. It is super cool and really fun to drive. That being said, there's a couple ways that it could be improved. And let's take it back to the shop. We'll discuss what could be done better so just a few quick thoughts before we wrap this up i think this thing did really well out there especially in the rain everything's super wet so when it's dry these tires are obviously going to hook up way better and it's going to crawl even better than it does however there's a couple things that it is lacking and that is the slow crawl is not quite there as well as i want to shorten up the front end and maybe even lengthen the back. So that means I'm gonna pull out the four links front and back and install these. These are for the deadbolt and they have shorter links in the front and longer links in the back. I think that's gonna make this thing even more capable than it already is and it's pretty darn capable. All right, that's all for this video. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button and tap the bell. I've got a lot of builds coming up this year you don't wanna miss out on.
And remember, when you think RC, think O Brothers RC. Thanks for watching.